Hey there, friends. Tracy here, trying to understand what feedback statements mean. Yes, I have filmed three additional videos that you could watch after this one, where I talk about C2, C3, C4, and I break down what I've found with feedback statements after talking to and reviewing 25 different score reports from this 2022 scoring season. But first, I want to take the time to go into the National Board Scoring Guide here. I've highlighted some things that really matter, and I want you to understand before you see those videos from me, if you intend to watch them at all. All right, and again, I'm talking to initial candidates right now for the National Board. I am not talking to MSC candidates. You do not get feedback statements like they do. Your feedback statements, if you do not achieve renewal, are different. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm on page 30 of the scoring guide, and I think it's really important that I remind everyone that scorers are trained to score supportively. And they are, they are trying to look for and reward instances when there is sufficient evidence. So they are not trained to find what's missing, but to find what is there. When they evaluate your portfolio components, they first are going to use the rubric, which you all know that, and the standards to assign this holistic score. Is this more of a one, more of a two, more of a three, more of a four? Uh, okay, and then, then they're moving into the feedback statements from it. So those feedback statements are really providing insight to you about what the quality is of each one of your components. Is it a four level? Is it a three level? Is it a two level? And there are certain ways that they're able to tell that. And they qualify to score to know that they're within the margin of error on the scoring. So I think that what we can say is when we get these feedback statements, it's up to us to now look at our work and say, why? Why did I get the statements I got and how am I going to do this better? So you are, there are three things the assessor is looking for. Clear evidence, consistent evidence, and convincing evidence. So clear is going to put you in that two mark, 2.0. Clear and consistent will put you in the three range. Clear, consistent, and convincing will push you to the four range. So when you prepare for your retake, you think about it. You probably provided clear evidence getting your two, but how can you make it more consistent that the assessor can truly like see it and believe it and know it? And there's just so many instances of it. They probably came and write it all down, which gets to convincing. Okay, which it's just the whole paper is just meeting all the rubrics of the bullet point, And there's just so much evidence. It's just oozing evidence to those rubric bullet points. All right. Now, for score levels one and two, if you receive a feedback suggesting that you review the instructions for the portfolio component, there are several reasons why you got that. It's rare that this happens, but some of you are getting it now. And I'm not, you know, sure like what it is that's being miscommunicated, but I want to get it cleared out here. You might have fewer students or instructional activities than they require for you. Like in C2, this would be common for, um, you know, it's not common that you get this, but it, that would be a C2 issue mostly or sometimes a C4 you know, I one of the candidates I looked at this year only used one student for C4. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You have to have a group of students. Um, irregularities like too many pages, um, exceeding the page limit. Not Mostly what I've seen this on this season is non-allowed edits in the videos for C3. It's bam, you're instantly down to a two because you do that. Don't do that. No edits in the videos. Uh uh, don't do that. Missing evidence, like some of the forms are missing, or a part of the written commentary is missing, or a segment of something is missing. You know, they won't mark it non scoreable, they'll just pull you back down to the one two level. 
wrong student work samples or lesson types. Like if they ask for a certain thing and you turn something else in, let's just say they ask for narrative writing and you give them argumentative opinion writing. Uh, no, they didn't ask for that. So that's the wrong student work sample. Or in C4, if you use two formative assessments or two summative assessments and they ask for one, you are at risk of getting this and getting bumped straight down to a two. If you have videos from the same lesson or the instru same instructional unit when they told you no, it has to be different, you're, you're possibly going to get this. And then if your videos in C3 mirror um, the same approach or content, you don't have that breadth, um, that different instructional format, small group, whole group, or small group one-on-one, -on -one, or whole group one-on-one, -on -one, or your teaching strategies aren't varied enough, you are in, you are potentially going to get this. So that's going to push you straight to the one or two level. You don't even have a chance to, to recoup. Don't fall into these traps if you're going back through retake right now. Now here in your scoring rubric, I mean, your scoring guide, they give you the feedback statements at each level. So notice this is component two, score level one. This is component two, score level two. And again, in the other videos, I go through why I have these colors on here. Component two, score level three. Notice they do not have a component to score level four because you don't get feedback statements if you get a 375 to a 4.25. You don't get them. Uh, and then we go into component three. Now, I have no colors on the score level one in my document here because I did not see any out of the 25 that I worked with. I did not see any of them at a one. They were all twos or up to a four that I looked at. And then component four, component four, and component four. And again, in the other videos, I cover the reasoning behind those colors. Uh, all of these pages to me are super important for you all the way down to page 44, which I talk about in those other videos. So choose one of them, whichever one you're going to retake, or if you're a brand new candidate going through initial right now, watch them all so you know what the pitfalls were this scoring season and you don't want to fall into them like these candidates did. Hey, I hope you enjoy it. Bye now.